Hello and welcome to video number 13 in the series I'm doing on a Telecaster guitar build. This is the guitar that we're talking about here. If you're new to the channel, I'll give you a brief rundown. If you're not and you're a subscriber and a regular, then you've seen this guitar in 12 other videos, so you can skip along if you need to. Essentially, this is a Roadworn Telecaster guitar body. I bought it as if it was just the body and no neck attached. I've since changed out the pickups, but that's it. And the neck is from Musicraft, and I ordered it to my specifications, but I ordered it raw with no finish on it, and I finished it in nitrocellulose. So that's your quick summary. Today we're going to talk about shielding of the guitar cavities in the Telecaster to get rid of unwanted noise. Now I have done some previous videos on shielding of guitars. I did my Stratocaster and also my Jazzmaster. If you're interested in those videos, you can click on the eye up here in the corner. There are some slight subtleties in the way you go about shielding those guitars, but the theory and the basics are the same. So I'm going to make this intro video short and tell you what you're going to see coming up in the video. First of all, I'm going to show you the guitar as it was with the unwanted noise. Just sort of a demonstration of the guitar in close proximity to an amplifier. I'm not going to be playing it or anything, I'm just going to show you the noise as the guitar is sort of a resting and quiet. And then I'm going to show you a quick video of the guitar after I did the shielding and demonstrate to you that it did actually work. And of course in the remainder of the video I'm going to show you how I actually went about shielding the guitar. I did try a previous approach before settling on the one I liked better. I'm going to show you both of those. They both work in theory, but one was just easier to apply. So that's it. I hope you get a lot out of this video. The shielding did work tremendously. It cut down on a lot of the noise as you'll see and it's a pretty easy thing to do if you're okay with some soldering and uh, a little bit of time and effort to put into to making it work. It's pretty straightforward and you get the hang of it as you go. It's not a terrible thing to do and it's a good experience. It's a good thing to learn and to apply to your other guitars if you need to do that with them in the future. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications. Thank you as always for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, just a quick reference here for my Telecaster. I am in the neck position. Here's the hum. Touching the metal parts. Strings. The cover for the neck pickup. Middle position. Bridge. Okay, I've attempted to recreate this setup that I shot months ago. So some things have changed, but I've got the exact same settings on my amp. It's actually a memory bank, so I just recalled it. And uh, the volume and everything's at the same as it was before. And I'm about the same distance from the amp. But anyway, here's volume all the way open, tone all the way open, the same as it was last time. I'll go to the neck position. You can hear a tiny bit of that same thing, but I believe it's way better than it was. So let's go to the middle and bridge. So yeah, I believe it's toned down the hum quite a bit. All right, so I got some pretty good hum going on with this Telecaster. I uh, just wasn't satisfied with it. I didn't want to deal with it. I'm not a fan of that noise if it can be helped. Now, 60 cycle hum is a different thing with the single coil pickups. You can't really get around that unless you get stacked single coils or noiseless. Um, I like the idea of a single coil and it being a true single coil. So I just like to shield my guitars and just deal with the rest of it. And if you you know manage your guitar, if you're not pointing it towards some lights or something, then 60 cycle hum is pretty easy to you know just deal with so i got everything kind of taken apart here for the moment you can see this is uh factory wiring as far as i know i got this body essentially brand new from stratosphere as you're probably aware of by now but anyway so i've just taken the, the cover plate off and there's a lot of length of wires in there you know they could probably be shortened up the thing is that is i feel like these wires are acting as an antenna so you know the more length you have the more that can be uh, an occurrence so that's that for now the neck pickup on these vintage style telecasters is actually drilled straight into the body of the guitar down in the cavity so that was kind of new to me my old telecaster on my last Telecaster, the screws went through the pickguard, like on a Strat, but with the vintage style, they actually go straight into the body. I kind of like that. There's less screws on top and it's pretty much like hidden in the pickguard and it looks kind of cool, like it's just floating. So I like that, but 
anyway, um, so there's a channel here for where these wires go. And again, these wires, this length of wire here is a good area for there to be, you know, interference or the EMF or whatever to get picked up in these wires. And then here is the underneath side of the plate, the bridge plate, which you can't really see. I'll try to give you a better image here. This is the underneath side of the bridge plate. So what I didn't know at first, or what I came to learn is that the Tex-Mex pickups do not have a base plate underneath the pickup. So in most Telecasters in the bridge position, there's a metal plate underneath them. And that's kind of the signature Telecaster sound. So, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I have some Keystone pickups I may switch out, but for the time being, I think I'm just gonna sort of live with these and, and see how I like them. I read some information to where the bridge pickup and the Tex-Mex set is really set to kind of compete with the humbucker as far as output and, and punchiness. So I kind of like that. If I ever do play guitar, it's usually a church and worship setting and sort of modern worship music calls for a humbucker in a lot of situations. And like if I play my Strat, it just doesn't seem to cut it and have that sustain that I need. So, you know, I'll, I like this idea. And then the neck pickup for the tech is supposed to be more of a Strat neck tone, which I love. So, you know, like I said, I'm just gonna play around with these for a while and see if I wanna change them out. But back to this, so this bridge pickup is grounded to the base plate here, or the, you know, the bridge plate by this wire down here that goes from the pickup and it goes with a little clip on that screw and it's held down and it touches the, the plate, the bridge plate. So that's how that works. That's how that grinding happens. Some telecasters you'll see a little, a little wire up here where it connects to the plate, but anyway, that's that. So what I'm gonna do here, my goal is to use aluminum foil for the cavities. I have used aluminum tape in the past and I do have some of that left, but I'm gonna see if I can get away with using aluminum foil. Just shove down in these cavities. It doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to do its job. And then I'm gonna twist the wires that occur from the pickups to the control plate and then from the control plate to the output jack. So the idea behind that is you get sort of natural shielding. The If you think of the uh, the wave, they're like sine waves going on with these, right? And there's opposite sine waves. So when you twist these around, they sort of cancel that signal out, not the actual signal you're getting from your magnets, but, and I don't have the best scientific explanation for this. Actually, I don't really understand electronics super great. I don't claim to, but I know enough to be dangerous, I guess. So that's the idea again, shielding, and then, you know, twisting the wires together, that should do a great deal. And I'm gonna put some aluminum foil on the back of the pick guard, and of course, bring up the aluminum foil on the edges of these cavities so that the, everything connects together. Now, I don't necessarily need to like solder in or take a wire and screw it into these cavities because here's how they're all connected, right? So this pickup is connected to this, it's grounded. And then when that ground makes the connection to this aluminum foil, that's gonna be connected there, right? And that's gonna be connected back to the control plate. Everything's gonna be grounded on the back of this pot. And this pot, this ground, wire or this control cavity is gonna to be touching the aluminum foil here. That's gonna connect that. I'm gonna have some foil coming up here and on these spots that's gonna connect the pick guard. Uh, and the pick guard is gonna be connected here on top of this where this comes up on the edge and it's gonna be connected here. And of course the, the neck pickup is also grounded all the way back to the control cavity. So everything is gonna be connected without having individual wires going everywhere. That's the idea, I hope it works out. I really am not a fan of soldering, it, it makes me anxious. You know, I feel like I need another hand, I feel like I'm always questioning my joints, or I'm questioning if I burn up the pots and things like that, or I'm afraid I'm gonna like stray and like burn through a wire. It's just, it makes me really anxious, I don't like it, but I gotta do it. So come along the journey, um, hopefully it goes well. Okay, I've got everything out of the guitar at this point, which is so much fun. I hope you can hear the sarcasm in my voice. I'll say it again, I hate soldering, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm hoping, I've got my aluminum foil here, I'm hoping that I can shove it down in here in these cavities and things will go well. On a Strat, there's a few more points where you got these corners sticking out where the three pickups go, and I had a really hard time with my Strat trying to get aluminum foil to work. I had a previous Strat where I got it to work, no problems, but I don't know what the difference was. But these cavities are big enough where I hope I can just gonna shove it down in there and have some over the sides. As long as there's no tears, you know, that should be fine. So we'll see how that goes. Looks like I'm gonna need a lot more aluminum foil than that. I'm gonna try to use a piece like this on this little cavity here.
Okay, I think that's gonna work once I clean it up. So I'm going to move on here. Um, I guess my only tip at this point would be to start with a bigger piece of aluminum foil than you think you need. You can always cut off the excess. I'm going to try to use this piece in there. See how we do. to tear. Okay, we got that. I think I'm gonna take my razor blade and do some gentle, fine cutting around this because that's gonna be a mess. That's gonna be sticking out all around the control cavity. So that ain't gonna work, but I need to just have a little thin lip around the top there. as we get the control plate on. Here's an idea. All right, I took out my little canoe of aluminum foil out of the control plate cavity, and now I'm trying my aluminum tape, and it actually seems to be better. I put an entire strip around the wall, and now I'm gonna go in, hopefully, and put a piece down at the bottom, fold over the edges a little bit so that it touches, and if nothing else, I can put a piece of tape down to connect the two. So I use my little banana boat here of the aluminum foil from the cavity to make a rough drawing of the shape of the bottom of the cavity on the aluminum tape. Now I'm just gonna cut that out, and hopefully it'll work well. I decided it was a dumb idea to draw on this side because it's permanent marker and even though it's on aluminum, it seems to be on there and it looks kind of dumb with marker all over it. So I drew on this side and I'll cut around that and we should be good. By the way, this tape is from Harbor Freight. I don't remember how much it was, but if you know Harbor Freight, it wasn't expensive, it couldn't have been. It is, you know, conductive, there's continuity throughout, except the adhesive, it either is not conductive or it's very weak, so I wouldn't trust it. In other words, if you stick a piece of this together on top of another one that's not connected already, you're not gonna have a continuous uh, electrical connection. An easy way around that is just to turn a piece of tape over, connect the two, and then put a piece of tape on top of that. You just have to keep track of, you know, where you need a connection and how you're doing it. Okay, let's see how this goes. To connect the two, I'm going to do the whole tape over tape thing where I put a piece of this. Well, I'll show you. Okay, so here's my solution. I'm going to take this piece of tape with the backing on it and I'm going to put it, I'm going to put sticky side to sticky side on here. And now when I put this piece of tape, you can see that piece of tape in the middle, the bigger one. When I put this down, and to connect these two pieces, the one on the wall and the one on the bottom, there should be a good connection between the two electrically. And I'll try to get my multimeter out to show you that that works, if it does work. And just to show you that it's working, if I put these on the wall, hear that sound? And if I put one on the wall and one on the bottom, I still have connection or conductivity. 
Of course, at this point, I need to go in and do all three of these cavities now with the electrical tape or with the aluminum tape. And I don't know that I'll show you all that. It's pretty boring. The idea and what worked well on the control cavity was taking a continuous piece and going around the wall. And then again, putting a piece down in the bottom and then putting a piece of tape between the two where the connection is made. So to get the shape of this piece of tape that I need on the bottom of the cavity of the bridge pickup, I took a piece of aluminum foil, not tape, just aluminum foil, a piece of obviously bigger than this, and then I just uh, took that piece, rectangular piece, and I just kind of pushed down on it, made an indentation, and I cut that out. So now I can use this to kind of draw my tape and cut that out and make a piece to go down in there. It seems like a lot of steps, but it'd be a lot easier than trying to put a rectangular piece down in there and have all these nasty corners and a bunch of excess sticking to the walls or anything else inside the cavity. That would be helpful to show you this. I found the best way to cut down the wall of each cavity, if you will, because, you know, this huge piece of tape sticking up but I've got it down on the wall of the cavity all around. So I found the best way to cut through it uh, and get, the, get off the excess is to go from the outside like so with the razor blade. And it works fairly well. Just slice right through it all the way around and you're good to go. Okay, finished. Everything looks pretty good. Nice and neat, shiny. Uh, it was pretty sucky. Took me an hour or so, uh, but once you get on a roll, it goes quickly. And it's really a lot better than aluminum foil. I keep kidding myself thinking I can just shove aluminum foil in there and be happy with it and it's gonna go in easy, but it never does. Should have learned from my strap project. But the aluminum tape works really well. So this is something that I really need to think about, but uh, this cavity is gonna be grounded to the bridge plate and that is going to be grounded to pot and the pot's gonna be grounded to this cavity. But over here, we, got, we don't really have a way to connect these to these two because the neck pickup is not going to be connected really in any way to this cavity unless I want to count the screws going through the aluminum foil into the body, but I don't know if I want to count on that. So what I think I'm going to do is do a little tag here, a little a little tail. Uh, my control plate goes up to the, it butts up against the pick guard, so you're not gonna be able to see anything, but I'll put a little tail that connects the pick guard when I put aluminum foil on the pick guard. So the pick guard will connect these two cavities, and then I'll put a little pigtail there to connect the pick guard to that, which will connect everything if it goes well. Here's gonna be my fix for this little connection to the pick guard and then to the control cavity. I'm gonna do the sticky on sticky part thing. This little piece will connect the cavity to this and the pick guard will be connected to this. So that should be the connection that we need. Okay, multimeter check from the control cavity to this piece up here. Good to go. I've done my pick guard now. As you can see, here's how I did it. I used 3M General Purpose 45 spray. You can get this um, hopefully pretty easily. I can't remember where I got mine, but I did this with my Strat as well. I used super glue, I think, for my Jazz Master, which probably wasn't the best, but this stuff's great. It's tacky and, you know, once you put it on, it's not going anywhere, so it does the job. Anyway, I basically sprayed the aluminum foil, like a square rectangular sheet, and I slapped the pick guard on it, and then I just used a razor blade to cut around the pick guard and works great. Okay, I've got all my wires fished back through. So here's my output wires twisted together. Here is my neck pickup wires twisted together. And here is the bridge wires twisted together. Now all I have to do is solder up. It should be a piece of cake, right? We'll see. Something that I also want to do while I'm in the guitar and the wiring and everything, I want to do the 50s wiring. Uh, there's an article on Premier Guitar. I've actually got it up right here, but I'll put a link in the description so you can read it for yourself. Anyway, what you have to do is, it's pretty easy. You just take this wire from the tone pot, and instead of going from this lug, you take the wire to the middle lug of the volume pot. So just one wire swap from here to there. And that doesn't look, I think, the article says it doesn't look exactly like the 50s wiring, but it accomplishes the same thing. So they call it the lazy way to do it, but as long as it accomplishes the same thing, that's fine with me. Some of the benefits of the 50s wiring is supposed to be that the overall tone gets stronger, tighter, and more transparent. The typical treble loss that occurs when rolling back the volume is much less. The tone and the volume controls 
vocals interact with each other. Like when you change the volume, the tone changes a little bit and vice versa. Anyway, it's supposed to be a really nice modification and kind of supposed to open things up a little bit, make everything more transparent. We'll see. I've done it in my Les Paul, but you know, that's, that's, the, that's the Gibson thing anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do to the telly, just because. I don't have it figured out, but I'll take 